Down command is probably one of the more tricky commands. And what's really nice about these place beds and having the dogs getting on and off them and sitting on them a lot is that we're already getting nice downs from the dog in this environment. Sometimes when you're in a classroom setting and the dog had just come in and then people are trying to teach it down to a dog that just came into the classroom, it could be a really big nightmare because the dogs are so nervous about the environment. So we've kind of created a lot more relaxation on day two here, which is why we're going to be going into that down command. When it comes to teaching the down, it does take some finesse and it does take the appropriate sequences and it does take the appropriate languages to make the dog very fluent and very confident in doing this command, okay? There are two types of dogs, though, that typically struggle with the down command. The first type of dog is your nervous, fearful, anxious dog, right? They typically don't like to down on command. And a lot of times people think, well, it's because they're being stubborn. But that couldn't be any further from the truth. So the down command is a very submissive and vulnerable position. So if you already have a dog that struggles with fear or anxiety or insecurity and you're asking them to lie down, especially in an environment like this, it may be very challenging for them. So I want you to think of it this way. Imagine that you went into a prison and the prison guards let out all the prisoners and they put a mattress in the middle of the room and they said, go ahead and lay down and close your eyes and be fine. <laughs> How do you feel doing that? Not great, right? It's kind of how your dog feels lying down in this particular environment. At home, maybe not so much, but here for sure. They don't trust all these people, they don't trust all these dogs, and we're asking them to completely let their guard down. It can be tricky, okay? So that's the first type of dog that typically doesn't like to down. The second type of dog that doesn't like to down is not in this classroom and you likely won't meet one of them. But the second type of dog that doesn't like to down mm -hmm. is a truly dominant dog. Mm -hmm. And they don't come along that often, mm -hmm. right? The truly dominant dog, when you try to get them to down with any language whatsoever, is gonna look at you and say, you live, mm -hmm. right? And they're not gonna go into that down for you. And if you're not an experienced trainer, you'll likely wind up getting bit in the face, okay? So there are two different types of dogs. We do not have that second dog. We've never had one of those dogs in class. We wouldn't even allow one of those dogs in class, right? That doesn't mean they're aggressive, but they are strong, powerful breeds that are not looking to take direction from anybody. Okay? What type of breed would that? Your, your livestock guardian breeds are going to do that to you pretty regularly. So you do have to know what you're doing. You do have to be able to read the dog very clearly um, in order to start getting those results. So larger breeds are, are more known for that. But it's also takes experience too to know the difference between is the dog actually doing that or is the dog just insecure and putting up front, right? Being able to tell the difference between that is very important. So we don't have to worry about that second dog in here, but we do have to worry about a few of those first dogs, okay? So we're going to teach the down with our three different languages. Now, getting our dog to follow just the food lure isn't always the easiest thing, right? not using any other language, not giving any type of body language or signal, not saying the word down, not using our leash, just getting the dog to follow the food board is not always the easiest. But it's important for us to know how to problem solve simply with one language so that we can perfect that one language. So we're going to start with that one. The second language, leash pressure. Remember we talked about that opposition reflex where the dogs feel pressure on the neck and they automatically pull in the opposite direction? We don't get a ton of that with the sit command, so leash pressure is really easy to teach for the sit command. With the down command, you can have a dog who downs perfectly, but as soon as you introduce the leash pressure, you can't get the dog to down at all because their opposition reflex tells them to pull against it. So you might already have a dog in this class that downs wonderfully, but as soon as we start the leash, portion, or leash pressure portion, they might not down at all. And most people wind up saying to me, well, my dog already knows how to down. Why do I have to teach this to them? It's for all the times that your dog doesn't down on command, doesn't down for the food. And you cannot tell me ever that your dog always responds. My own dogs have been training for years and they don't always respond, okay? They are not robots. Even robots don't always respond, right? How many times do your computer fail on a daily basis, right? So, you cannot tell me that the dog will always respond if we 
you, you're always responding to a verbal command. It's a lie. But I can tell you that once leash pressure is taught, if you have a leash on the dog, you can get the dog to always respond to leash pressure. Okay? That's why we teach it, so that we don't have to repeat commands, we don't have to bribe the dog, and we can help the dog through stressful situations, right? There's going to be times when she doesn't want to down. But we know that having her lie down is the best thing for her, right? We're going to know that there's going to be a time where lying down is not Bodhi's favorite thing or Sammy's favorite thing or Cinder's favorite thing. But we know if we teach it, we can stop them from getting hit by a car. We can stop them from jumping on Great Aunt Lucy and knocking her over and breaking her hip, right? We can stop a lot of those behaviors. So sometimes we have to teach the leash pressure to make sure that we have those long-term long goals in place. Okay, so we're going to start with our first language, and I'm going to pick a dog. I'm going to try Mr. Magoo, because we haven't done anything with that. Um, actually, I'm going to try it with a different dog, because Mr. Magoo doesn't sit. Uh, he's going to be a dog that I'm going to have to show it from a standing position going into down. Normally, you have the dog sit first, and then you lure them into the down. Okay, so... My goal here is to kind of just have her eventually get tired of being hunched over and she eventually kind of settles into that D-O-W-N. And then I'll mark it as soon as she goes down. I'm holding my treats in such a way that she can smell them, she can lick them, she can taste them, but she can't actually get them. So I have them between my fingers. And she's working on it, which is fine. I want her to understand that there is a reward there, but she does it, it doesn't get unlocked until you do certain things. Yes. <laughs> This is a patience game, so a lot of times I would see most dog owners already pulling on the dog, saying the command over and over and over again. Patience. Let the dog figure it out what you're looking for, okay? Just use that one language. Try to keep the food right in front of the nose, too. Big mistake people make is they've got the food way out here and they're trying to get the dog to lay down. Keep it right in front of their nose, okay? So we're going to bring it back down to the ground and we're going to come out. Yes, we're going to mark it. Step back and feed. Nice job, Shadow. Oh, good. Oh, my goodness. You got that one, too. We're going to do one more for you. Okay, we'll bring her back into the SIT. Food to the face, down to the ground, and out. Yes. 
So now we're getting a dog who's understanding, right? Mm -hmm. One more rep. Back into that SIT. Down to the ground. Yes. <laughs> see, yeah. see what patience does? We could have easily started leash pressure and said the command over and over, and then we would have had a dog that really disliked this command. But I waited a little bit, and I'm starting to make it more enjoyable. And because I'm stepping back and feeding, it's increasing my dog's desire to do it again. The YPS is increased enthusiasm. The good.